All right, here we go. Salute to Knicks Nation. This is the debut episode of Knicks Fan TV's Court Vision. On this show, we're going to dig deeper into the game and dissect the X's and O's with the scouts and coaches that know it best. Tonight's guest, he covered the Knicks for many a years for SNY's Knicks blog, also over 10 years of scouting experience, Tommy D. Tommy, how you feeling, man? CP, I feel great, man. I'm actually as excited for this season, uh, really, as, as I can remember any season in the last few, for sure. I'm uh, really uh, pumped to be with you. This is a really cool new segment that yeah. I'm proud to be the first on, and uh, let's get rolling. Happy to tear the cover off on it. And as, as you said, there's a lot of anticipation for this season. A couple new young bucks that we added to the stable, one of which is OB Toppin, the Dayton Flyers high flyer that the Knicks picked with the number eight pick. You know, OB comes with, a, you know, a lot of acclaim for his explosive dunks and, and athleticism. I feel like there's some segments of his game that a lot of people are not talking about, and one of which is in transition. You know, Tommy, the Knicks ranked at the bottom of the league in transition once again at 28th. Obi Toppin, conversely, at Dayton, ranked within the 95th percentile with 1.436 points per possession in transition. What did you see here from Obi as he's out there on the break? Right. The first thing that you see, guard skills. I've been watching Obi a long time. Uh, he was about 6'1", 6'2", in high school, all of a sudden sprung up to 6'9". So he has those guard skills uh, embedded in him. Now he's just bigger. Uh, so what you can see him leading the break here is just drawing defenders, making the right pass to the corner. One thing that I really love about him in transition, is not only the finishing ability and the ability to find other teammates for plays, but also cutting back uh, door You know when opportunities present themselves. Um, in addition to, you know, just not only uh, defending, but also being able to get out here, uh, and obviously the fantastic finishing ability. So being able to just run the floor, know where he needs to be in space, being the first player down in transition is always a good thing as well, because that's where your offense is going to flow through. You can have your secondary break here. Here he makes it easy. He just throws the ball to the other corner. You, you see that a lot with him on a lot of the tapes that you don't see that from many other players. Uh, what does that do? Well, that makes the defense reset. That allows for him to then identify what else is happening on the floor. He's noticed the five guys surrounding the perimeter, his defender now under the basket. Just There's not enough space. There's not enough ability to be able to get back fast enough when you have a guy of Obi's ability who can also make shots from the perimeter. So what you love about him is just, again, the speed, the passing. He's a total package when it comes to transition. We talked about RJ uh, Barrett. Uh, last year with his ability in transition. Now you've got two players who are going to help you, two young players who are going to help you get out. And that's, uh, CP, really important on the defensive end. Get stops and then get out. And that's really, I think, what they're preaching here early on. Yeah, and as you mentioned, R.J. Barrett, you know, although the Knicks were in the in the bottom in terms of transition, one of the silver linings was R.J. Barrett. The Knicks were 0.5 points per possession off of steals in transition when R.J. Barrett was in the game. That put him within the 72nd percentile within the league. Thibodeau has said over and over again that with these young pups, he wants to get out and run. And as you said, with R.J., with Obi, if they have a chance to uh, generate some turnovers or off a long rebounds, they can get out and run and they have two guys that can get out, make plays, and also finish. And to your point earlier in, in, in the shows a couple uh, episodes ago, I believe, you know, the Dennis Smith conversation, that's, I think, where you're maybe seeing him, you know, getting the look early on uh, because now you add the third player uh, to those two. Maybe Obi comes off the bench, but then, you know, again, you, if you can get as many athletes on the floor at once with speed, with ability to get downhill, once you get the stop, which, again, is not Dennis Smith Jr.'s strength necessarily, but hopefully that's going to be something that's improved under Tom Thibodeau. Now you've got these really young, plus athletes getting out in space and making things happen. Now, Tommy, the modern NBA big is typically one that has a prowess to shoot it from outside. But uh, there's something to be said about the passing big man. We saw most notably the rise of Bam Adebayo, Nikola Jokic and his magic, Draymond Green. You know, talk to me a little bit about the impact that the passing big has on half-court offenses. 
Right. When you think of the older traditional bigs, you know, that we grew up on, you know, the Ewings, the Shacks, the Hakeems, it was get the ball in the post, dribble a few times. You know, if there's a double, then you kick out. Now you see a lot of these younger generation, new generation guys you mentioned, Bam, Jokic. As soon as they touch the ball, it's gone. You know, there's no necessarily waiting for the double team. It's just constantly moving. There's no sticking. And what I really like with Obi, especially in the two-man game, is that once he gets the ball in his hands, it's gone. And then all of a sudden now you're talking about an easy pick and roll or a, a high-low situation like here, just little things and knowing how to position himself, seeing that there's not going to be any help at the rim. Last year, as you see, the Knicks were eighth and, you know, roll man Mitch Robinson has a ton to do that, do with that, as we know. Um, but it's just the ability to visually see what the next play is and to, to really not have the ball stick in his hands, whether it's posting up with his back to the basket. Again, what you're going to see here is just a very quick whip pass to the corner. And again, what does that do? That makes the defense react. It makes them lose focus on uh, other players on the floor, including OB. Here he is now in the corner waiting. You know, that could have been a drive and kick situation there, but a teammate was able to get a layup based off a very quick whip pass early in the possession. I love this example. This was a nationally televised game against Kansas. They were fourth in the nation at the time. Obi had not taken a shot to this point, first few uh, moments of the game. He really wanted to get his teammates involved. And what does he do here? He finds space. He gets the ball down in the post, gets his back to the basket, but happily accepts what will end up being a hockey assist. Here he makes the easy pass. The defender, Kansas defender has to close out. He only can close out on one guy. Easy pass for a wide open three pointer. This is simple, really effective, efficient basketball. The ball just does not stick in his hands. And that's what you have to love most. Even again, once he's a back to the basket and back to the basket type situation, when you, are able to get mismatches. This is what the NBA is all about and finding, hunting the mismatch. Here, an easy one. Can't teach this. How about the volleyball pass out for three? Just feeling that double team. Shot didn't go in, but it was still a terrific pass on and, and a field play on his part. Again, another whip pass here. Gets in the post. The ball does not stick. He feels a double team coming. Eyes in the back of the head type stuff. But where does the ball go? It doesn't go to the top of the key. It goes to the opposite corner. And that just makes the defense have to scramble to try to stop the ball. And they did a really good job last year, Dayton, in getting guys to attack the basket as much as possible and just getting easy points off of uh, Toppin's passes. And Tommy, some people may or may not know, Obi actually played point guard up until about his junior, senior year in high school. So you see some of that there in his half-court sets. You see the vision. You see the patience, uh, the anticipation, not just making the direct assist, but breaking it down two plays ahead to make sure that his teammates get open looks. You know, not making the ball stick so that the defense can lock in and settle on you, making that quick pass, making the quick decision. You see a lot of good offensive awareness and IQ from Obi, And I think the Knicks who ranked 30th in half-court offense, can certainly benefit from his half-court playmaking. No question. Now, Tommy, another avenue that I like about Obi's game is he's not, he's not just a pick-and-roll guy, a pick-and-pop guy, but he's very effective operating out of the post, not necessarily to back his guy down in a traditional sense, but to really get the offense generated out of that post action. What are some of these clips that uh, that you marked up here? Yeah, some good stuff here. Rick Pitino once said, the ball has to start in the post, uh, wherever that is. And what he means by that is it's not just always about pick and roll. And as you mentioned, Toppin's not just a pick and roll, pick and lob, lob type guy. He does have the ability to get the ball in the high post or the low post. But what I really want you to notice here against Georgia is Georgia decides they want to switch everything, which is fine with Dayton. Because here now, to Toppin can get a very easy entry pass to the top of the key and then quickly turn and then have basically a dribble handoff. He didn't dribble, it wasn't a handoff, but now you've got two man action on the right side. This is NBA action. Now look what happens here. Four, four uh, passes into this possession, Toppin has been switched on three times already and now has the smallest player on the floor, 5'10", a point guard, uh, guarding him. The NBA is about hunting the mismatch, and here is big against super small. It doesn't completely work out for Dayton at this point but what it does is draws a double team they do a nice job of collapsing 
and now you reset. Now you get the big back on him. That's the fourth time, fourth switch in the same possession. And what ends up happening is they end up getting a pretty decent look that doesn't go down. But just an example of two, three man or two or three man game out of the post that allows for more fluid offense. And again, the ball not sticking. The overall theme being the ball not sticking. Now, what I love here uh, is this speed in which he's able to come to the ball, which triggers a three man action. And I don't think anybody's coined this, but this is what I like to call read option in the NBA, which is dribble handoff, zone read. If there's no help, it's a very easy attack of the basket, which Top is able to do going left and finishing at the rim. Here's more three-man uh, against Georgia. Really good big-time athletes on this Georgia team from last year. We all know uh, Anthony Edwards was picked number one overall. Here's Top in now in a three-man game on the left side. Not ultimate space, but what he's able to do is just create space with screens and attacking of the lane, which opens up a wide open shot for a teammate. Defender's got to come close out. He's able to actually get past the defender and just a nice little pull up here. This is creating space in three man, which is very difficult to do because, you know, you figure just in two man, there's going to be more space. Uh, and to me, when you talk about the NBA, it's about hunting mismatches and finding that type of space because he has those guard skills and the ability to sort of fake out of those dribble handoffs. He can certainly hand off to someone like an RJ Barrett who can attack and think about it from, we talked about RJ before, but I really think they're going to make a nice two man unit because RJ attacks those gaps with such ferocity and strength. He's not the most athletic guy in the world, but he can finish at the rim. Teams have to focus really hard and, and, and have help defenders on the roll for OB. That's going to create some space for RJ. It's also going to create some kickout opportunities for Frank Nilakina, right, right, uh, right. quickly, you know, the shooters that are going to be able to, uh, to benefit off of that driving action. The key here being attack the basket attack with athleticism and attack with ferocity. Absolutely. And you know, that's tips. He's going to play to his strengths and with RJ, OB, Mitch, even Julius for right now, that that's what they're going to do. They're going to be attacking that basket. So as you said, the key will be uh, having those shooters out there in the perimeter that uh, can make the defense pay. No doubt. You know, Tommy, when, when we look at these clips and we look at the breakdowns, I think the oh, an, a general theme that I see is, is you know, when we look at his anticipation, his vision, um, is moving without the ball. You know, Obi does that fairly well, and I, and I think it benefits the half-court offense as well. Being able to move without the ball, it really does – have the defense make sure they know where he is at all times, which at this level um, is going to create great opportunities for teammates. For me, it's uh, really the intangibles and, and the ability to cut just little stuff like this ball out of bounds, blob situation. Um, this is a really well coached set, but just seeing that, Hey, look, that left block is open. I know if I make a nice flex cut, I'm going to get an easy one here. And the easy baskets are the ones that you chip away, chip away and really break down um, you know, the backbone of a defense. And then, of course, the clutch gene. Here he is against uh, Colorado to tie the game at the end of the game, um, which, you know, was a pretty uh, decent matchup there. Um, uh, two really good teams going at it. Um, but when we talk about the bright lights, we talk about the garden, and he wants all of that attention. He wants all of that um, notoriety. You got to have the clutch gene. It looks like he does have that specifically in that play right there. Um, and then it's an, it's a, it's a pick and roll type of thing too. We know how good he is and everything else, especially here. It's the little things, just a little shove. Watch what this does. It opens up the floor for him. Now the defender's got to make a decision. Am I going to guard the three or am I going to guard the pick two? You know what he's going to do? Pick your poison, lob city and away we go. And that's just based off of a very simple, simple design play that he knows very very well that's a very very well coached team that he played for everybody's sharing the ball for each other um he learned from that and he, i think he's going to bring that element day one uh tomorrow night against the uh the pistons in detroit yeah uh, a lot of um you know intricate areas to his game especially on the offensive end not just about the explosive explosiveness and the dunks but um you know seeing a, a lot of things that can really help the knicks as i said 28th in in transition 30th in the half court you know th this kid's going to be able to help come in and help right away to this right. next to this knicks offense that that certainly needs it and i like what i'm hearing from coach thibodeau and and the players right after the practices you're not seeing a lot from the workouts 
you know, you and I hear, hear different things about what's happening down there. And what I like, and I think what you're going to see is, you know what, it's going to be helter skelter on the defensive end. It's going to be about energy. It's going to be about effort. They may play 11 guys. They may play 12 guys. What it's going to be is active hands, rebounding, you know, trying to get over screens, just really putting a stamp on things. And people can say, well, Obi, is he a, bit, is he a good defender? Is he? He's going to play with a lot of energy. So he may make mistakes defensively, but what he also is going to do is get deflections, get rebounds, get out, play with energy, try to get in transition, try to make things happen. If you can't get an easy basket in transition, let's reverse, kick the ball out, see if you can get somebody trailing for a three or run a set. But it's really going to start with that energy on the defensive end, and that's what I'm most excited to see. Absolutely, man. Now, another thing, you know, in a lot of these clips, uh, Obi played a lot of five at, at Dayton. They, they ran a lot of small ball five there at Dayton. Maybe with the Knicks, you're going to see him, or ultimately you'll see him paired up with a big, whether it's Mitchell Robinson, Nerlens Noel. How do you see his effectiveness maybe changing when you add in another big there that, that may not space the floor as well as when you put Obi at the small ball five? I think Mitch is going to have to learn a lot of horns. He's going to have to learn a lot of, um, you know, staying at one elbow. Maybe, you know, it's not just about pick and roll with him. Maybe it's about screening across for Obi. What I like to see them do is what Memphis did with Jaron Jackson Jr. before he got hurt. Jaron was, he, he was playing a lot of four, able to stretch the ball, uh, you know, stretch the court out to the three point line, getting those shots, playing off of John Morant, who was attacking ferociously at the rim. So there was enough space, even with Jackson at the four. I like the idea and they had of Obi at the five. Correct. So that's not that he's a traditional, you know, modern traditional five, uh, if you could say modern traditional, but you know, not someone who's going to completely stand out there. So he's taking some room uh, in the middle, not going to be a big threat, a la Mitch, you know, behind the three point line. Um, but they were still able to get Jackson to the outside and creating plays. A lot of two man, a lot of three man. Um, Obi's going to get his touches. He's going to get opportunities. Um, now it's about Mitch. How does he integrate? How does he learn to play five-man basketball? We know he can play two-man. We know he can play three-man. Obi comes in knowing how to play five-man, and that's um, that's going to be a really interesting thing. And I think Obi's up for it. Now it's on Mitch to make sure that he can mesh as well. The, the maturation of this young Knicks core under the leadership of Tom Thibodeau and staff. I'm, I'm looking forward to it, man. Nine months with no Knicks basketball. We're finally here. And uh, Court Vision is finally here. And, and we're happy that all the fans have tuned in. We're going to look forward to continuing doing these uh, film breakdowns as the, as the season goes by. So please leave us a comment below. Any requests that you may have, leave us your feedback. Definitely appreciate it. Tommy D, much appreciate it. CP Next Fan TV, we're out of here. Peace.